Hey everyone, thank you for being here with us today on Comics from the Future, where we are going to preview some awesome new upcoming series and covers we don't want you to miss, so you can add them to your pull list with your store and don't miss out. Don't let them sell off the shelves. In case you are new to our show, my name is Megan. I'm Andy. And I'm Jason. We're with Infinity Flux Comics out of Chattanooga, Tennessee. So while we have you here, please take a second to subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out the description box where we have links to our Instagram and our Whatnot account. We'll be doing, we've been doing a ton of Whatnot shows lately. We're doing one tonight also, so check it out if you're watching this on Friday. All right, let's get into it. That's not, not a big uh, intro today. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, it's also not a huge week for cons. There are some pretty big... Uh... Big ones up top. Yeah, and some good variants too. But yes. yeah, I think Marvel's taking a breather this week for the most <laughs> part. Okay, so we're going to start with our featured comics. Starting off with Shadow War Zone. I keep wanting to be like, this is Batman Shadow War Zone. No, just Shadow War Zone. But this does tie into the uh, Shadow War that is going on at DC between Batman, uh, Deathstroke Inc., and Robin. Of course, that's. Uh, where someone has murdered uh, Ra's al Ghul. They, they think it's Deathstroke, but this is a one-shot kind of showing the impact uh, that the Shadow War has on the DC Universe. So this is a couple of stories in this uh, written by various writers, various artists, uh, kind of centralized on different uh, big players. So we have a story about Black Canary, We've got a story about um, Harley Quinn. We've got one on Ghostmaker and Clown Hunter, which is uh, maybe their first reintroduction since. Yeah, because they kind of root off into the sunset, like with Ghostmaker being his new um, mentor. Yeah. They haven't got back to them yet. It's, it's real interesting. I'm having to be very careful because I did just read this, so I'm like, don't say anything that's that shouldn't be said. But I'll say that uh, especially the Ghostmaker and Clown Hunter story is really cool. Um, there are some new costumes. There are, uh, it's not the first appearance, but we do get the new character Angel Breaker in a pretty key story. Find out a little bit more about her and what her ties are into this whole thing. So looks really fun. And there is, uh, of course, something else going on. Luke Fox uh has his eye on harley quinn for something and you'll have to read to find out what but it looks like they're setting up something else pretty big coming up so really cool if you're reading the uh batman shadow war you'll definitely want to pick this one up to fill in all the little gaps uh this is our a cover and then this is going to be a big <laughs> one that. this is dc homaging marvel uh this is the howard porter variant i'm a little surprised usually they're kind of like with each other they're a little hands off like right we won't sure. we won't like homage you if you don't homage us but no this is just straight up um the days of future past cover with deathstroke and blood sport no what's his name respawn, <laughs> respawn. yes <laughs> respawn so uh yeah you'll definitely and it's got that classic trade dress which is super cool so I think a lot of people will be wanting this one. Yeah, about this cover, you know, this is like shots fired. Yeah. Like, I hope Marvel does the same thing. That would be great if they'd gotten sort of an homage war. <laughs> oh, yeah. Everyone wins in that. I, I would love that. Yeah, that would be great. Okay, this is a new one from Image called I Hate This Place. Uh, this is written by Kyle Starks with art by Archon Toplin, and it says it's for fans of Gideon Falls and Homesick Pilots. Uh, it is a horror story. It's about a couple who inherits a farmhouse, and they think they're going to start a new chapter in their lives, but instead they found it's already been inhabited for decades by supernatural beings, including aliens and ghosts and just all manner of horrific creatures. And yeah, it's basically they're going to... It, the solicitation kind of leaves us off at that. What are they going to do here? And we can see some menacing creature in the background stalking the grounds as well. Um, there's a few preview pages of this available. The art looks really good. It looks like a nice new horror stories with some substance to it. So I'm excited for it. Looking forward to it beginning. It looks to be um, ongoing as well. So we have our A cover. And then we have this explicit variant. <laughs> What do you really think about this place? Yep. Yeah, I was like, what's explicit about it? Oh, you can see. It's nice to see it back and forth on the screen. Yeah. Quickly changing. 
So, yep, <laughs> that kind of reminds you of uh, <laughs> I Hate Fairyland. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, looks to be really cool. Coming soon. Okay, one of the few number ones from Marvel is actually sort of an end cap number one. Mm -hmm. This is Devil's Reign Omega. You thought Devil's Reign was over? Not quite. Because now this is going to show sort of the aftermath of Devil's Reign, what happens in the wake of it. Uh, how do Marvel's New York-based heroes have to cope in a city now that has been so changed after Devil's Reign and what Mayor Fisk, the kingpin, has done? I mean, he pretty much turned the whole city against the heroes, mm -hmm. and it's not over. There, there's more to it. So this Omega, I, I don't know if uh, Zadarsky has some secret plans is going to slip in there, because, I mean, he put a lot into writing this storyline. It was a really good read, and uh, I don't know if he's... He, he may he may leave some lasting effect things more than just Elektra becoming yeah. uh, Daredevil, or Daredevil 2, or... I don't, I don't know how they differentiate when somebody <laughs> says, hey, Daredevil, when they're in the same room. They both go, huh? <laughs> yeah. But anyhow, so this is Devil's Reign Omega. It is a one-shot capstone ending to the Devil's Reign saga. And here is the Libera variant. And then we also have this Peach Momoko variant. Very creepy she, and bloody. She, she needs to wipe her eye. That looks like it burn. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I know a lot of times I say I'm very excited for something, but this I'm very excited for. <laughs> Uh, Fables is one of, I'd say, my two favorite series of all time, and it is back with Fables issue 151. This is picking up where Fables left off many years ago, and uh, it's celebrating Fables' 20th anniversary. It's hard to believe it was started 20 years ago, but uh, they do say that this is also a, it's a almost direct continuation of the previous run of from the last issue, and it's a good jumping on point. So I have read the first few pages of this. I'll tell you, it does kind of, um, it's kind of a check, uh, a, a check mark. It's like you start here, a checkpoint. You start here, and they fill you in a little bit on what's been going on, but they kind of set the new status quo going forward that just about anyone can, uh, can read and understand. The art in this is beautiful. Mark Buckingham is back, along with Bill Willingham writing this, um, and it starts a story called The Black Forest that uh, you'll have to read, but it does involve this character on the cover. And just like all fables, it's just a, it's, it's a mix of literature and um, like fun traditional comic book feel. Kind of a little bit uh, heroics, but with that kind of literary character. So uh, it also says that uh, there is a new adversary and a long thought dead fable returns so if you're a fan of fairy tales and you've never read fables definitely get on that because it's so good it's all in trade paperback and compendium and omnibus conditions everything but if you want to jump right into it this is a great one as well so i don't know if i read all the fables but i'm a big fan mm -hmm. of it too i don't know if i read all 150 <laughs> issues i read it, the the bulk of it i don't know if they ever got peter pan in there because at the time, the property was still under copyright. Yes. But now it's not, and I know that they wanted to use him. So I'm just waiting to see if they put Peter Pan in there. I'll say you will have your answer within maybe the first page. Wow. Okay. So that's cool. Uh, just a little hint, but like with any Fables thing, it's like you know a character, but when you see them in the Fables version of it, it, it really puts a new spin on it. Yeah, them. the more adult version, even though it doesn't make everyone gritty or bad. They're just no, they're a just, little more realistic. They've lived a little bit longer and yeah. know a bit more. So this is our A cover, and then we have our Buckingham cover. Next up is Fox and Hare from Vault Comics. So this is Fox and Hare in this are mercenaries. They are partially our main characters in this. It's also about a black market coder who discovers some top secret data basically revealing some of the past lives of citizens. So really top secret data of course owned by a mega corporation who wants its data back. So Fox and the Hare have to be hired. I honestly don't know whose side they're on. They're, they're probably good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but anyway kind of giving me some Matrix vibes and just cool 90s hacker stuff, but in the future. 
and also in the past live, so it's all over the place. Hopefully it's good. Uh, Fox and Hair, Vault Comics, this is cover A, and then we have this cover B from Yoshi, Yoshi Yoshitani. Yeah, this was supposed to come out quite a while ago and it got postponed, but there's a lot of talk about this book. I was, uh, I've read a bit about it. it sounds really cool, um, the really cool style and everything, so. And Vault's been doing some really good stuff lately. Okay, another from DC, but this is a little out of the main DC universe, I think. Mm -hmm. Um, so everybody knows Milestone Comics, but this Milestone is, is growing bigger. It's getting bigger than it was. This is called the new imprint Earth M, not to be confused with Asteroid M, Magneto's base. <laughs> it's not that at all. But uh, Milestone is getting bigger. They are now starting their imprint Earth M, or as an Earth Milestone, and they're starting up a new comic with new characters that are outside of Dakota City. So this is the first one. It is called Duo. It is a number one in a new six-part series. And the premise of Duo, you could probably guess a little bit from the title, that it involves two people. But it's much more than that. It is these two scientists that are also husband and wife, and they specialize in nanotechnology. Well, that same nanotechnology ends up saving their life. Something violent occurs where they're going to die, and the nanos save them. But... It, it doesn't say what it does exactly, but somehow they come together and they have to share a super-powered body that also controls all these nanorobots. So, um, you know, there are two people sharing one hero's body. <laughs> I don't think they can separate. And even though they're husband and wife, it sort of asks the question of how close is too close? And what happens when they disagree on how to deal with these new superpowers? So I, I think it's a very interesting sci-fi premise. Nanotechnology is something we're definitely moving into. So this is, um, you know, a bit of a sci-fi superhero tale. But really cool to see Milestone getting out of Dakota City. I thought when they brought it back, they were going to have it merge with the DC Universe. Mm -hmm. But that hasn't happened, at least yet. Maybe this is taking the steps to do that. I think it's smart, too, because... Uh, a lot of people have a lot of fond feelings for the original Milestone characters, and there's kind of that expectation of, like, you have to deliver what I liked, but uh, update it and update. everything. It's like this. It's set in that universe, but you get something fresh and new that you see right from the ground up, which is really cool. And yeah. I think this is written by Greg Pak, which it is I was, awesome. Yep, yeah, Greg, Greg Pak is writing it, who's an excellent writer. Um, so for everybody who likes to collect first appearances, this is definitely... You know, you're going to get the first of the characters. There's at least well. two. <laughs> but they become one by the end. You're wrong. Oh, man. You're two first, but just become one. Okay, so here is the Henderson variant for duo number one. I assume this is the couple there. And as you see as with the art, you know, they're, they're kind of clothed, but they're kind of not and kind of melting. Yeah. So. And they're like in front of a brain. Yeah, and as far as the question, how close is too close? That. <laughs> there, there you have it so now we're going to get to other number ones which this is not a number one but basically every issue of this so far has been a number one so we included it this is earth prime issue four star girl so this is uh it set in the cw um superhero universe this time with star girl and uh it sounds really fun it's a family vacation issue i was like the weird vacation issues that comics sometimes do. But uh, something from Stripe's past is hunting them on their vacation. So it's kind of asks the questions, is their vacation going to be ruined? And is it something even deadlier? So it sounds really fun. I like Stargirl a lot, and this looked really cool. Glad to see Stargirl back. Still waiting for that Jeff Johns uh, Stargirl series we were promised yeah. uh, a while ago. But maybe this can fill in your... Uh, your want for more star girl yeah we know that's um a very near and dear project yeah. to him so he's probably just really tooling it to mm -hmm. get it exactly right there's also a photo variant for this <laughs> once again not ready yet <laughs> guess they haven't got the film developed so uh if you're into those there's that too next we have shaolin cowboy this new mini series titled cruel to be kin Seven part series from the Shaolin Cowboy. What would you call this when something has multiple volumes of itself? 
It's kind of whatever Hellboy is. Yeah, it's whatever Hellboy is. <laughs> and speaking of, Mike Mignola is doing a cover for this. Anyway, basically the Shaolin Cowboy has his parenting skills put to the test w during a pandemic of violence. He has to homeschool his kid. <laughs> so, sound familiar, except not quite the same. Anyway, it's I guns. wonder where they came up with this <laughs> plot line. They, up with this? <laughs> they said it was, uh, a lot of it's based off Twitter feeds and stuff. And guns, swords, and flying guillotines. So, gonna be crazy. This is our cover A. And then, like I said, we have a Mike Bignola variant. And then we have cover C, Darrow. Yeah, Jeff Darrow is really good friends with Mike Mignola. They always sit next to each other at cons and stuff. So, makes sense that he's got a variant in this. If you've never read Shaolin Cowboy, uh, the art is incredible. And it's very weird. But it's really cool. Yep. And I like flying gu guillotines. <laughs> yeah, I mean, who doesn't? Except people on the receiving end. Exactly. Okay, so this is Disturbed Dark Messiah. This is the first issue of a five-issue series, which is written by Tim Seeley, but conceived of by the band Disturbed. So what is it about? There is a man who, he was a firefighter, and he's pulled out of his own time. So I think he's from our time, and he's pulled into the future. And this future is just sort of this dark, technologically ruled bad place and he's wondering why am i here why was i pulled here it doesn't seem to be random it seems like he has a purpose to be there um possibly to challenge the powers that be or to overthrow something but uh the only other details i can find is he has a guide called the vengeful one so who is this guy the vengeful one so this is dark messiah number one of five by the band disturbed and tim seeley it's also interesting, I believe that character is from like one of their album covers, and I believe it was designed by Greg Capullo, because he'd done a lot of Disturbed's album covers. Interesting. So, kind of cool. And I believe just the one cover. Yep. Next up is another Best Of. This one's, uh, they're, they're actually kind of tailoring them a little bit. This is TMNT Best of Rat King, who uh, the big event later this year is centered on uh, Rat King being the, the big antagonist of it. So they say you can get this and learn all about what kind of what makes him tick. Uh, these are really cool too because it has Rat King but from multiple publishers. So this collects, I believe, some of the Archie comics, um, the Mirage, everything, all the appearances of Rat King, or not all of them, but a few of them uh, from all across the thing. So you can get familiar before you read that new story arc coming up. So, really cool Best of Rat King. That would be a great cutout Halloween mask. You know, just like simple <laughs> yes. mask. Yes. That's wonderful. Like, it, the colors just work so so well with that. This is called My Brother Teddy. It is a one-shot from Source Point Press. And it's basically about, uh, you know, you remember your childhood toys? What if your bond with them was so strong that it basically came to life and then some for some reason you travel down to hell? That's what's going on in My Brother Teddy. Yeah, the art in this looked really cool too. I was I was impressed. It's very kind of high caliber for for a smaller publisher. It looks like a dark uh, toy story. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Who loves sci fi horror? I do. I love horror. I love sci-fi. Put them together. That's all. I mean, that's Twilight Zone. You know, that's that's all kinds of stuff. Well, here is Spectro, a one-shot by Aftershock Comics. This is going to be in the prestige size, so it's sort of that mm -hmm. like sort of magazine-like size, not quite as tall, but. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is all done by Juan Doe, who has done a lot of great stuff. He, he did his work yeah. on Dark Ark. He did um, some of the an animosity stuff. And uh, this is going to be four different stories, all sci-fi horror. Uh, and, you know, he did the cover here. So if that <laughs> seems to be your thing, that is your interior artist. That's the guy who's telling the stories. So I'm trying to remember some of the, some of the stories, what they were saying, because it's like one line per story. One was like, what happens when one of our nine planets gets uh, downgraded? It's no longer a planet. You know, ooh, something happens. You know, maybe it's sentient. I don't know. What happens when somebody travels to Mars because they want to climb the highest peak in the entire galaxy? What will they discover? You know, it's all these what-if sci-fi tales that hint it's going to be horrific, whatever they discover. It's not going to be good. 
you know, just like the, the girl in the skull mask. <laughs> That, that's that's not good, no. you know. You, it's cool to look at. You probably don't want to meet her in real <laughs> life. So this is Spectro. It is just a one shot. I guarantee your store will not get enough of this unless you ask <laughs> them for your copy. So here's your notice. And now we're gonna get to cool covers and other comics. Um, this is where we talk about issue twos and threes of series you might have just read but you forgot to sign up for. We're also gonna show you all the awesome variants that you might want. There's a lot this week. Some really cool ones. Starting with Batman Beyond the White Knight, number three of eight. Uh, this is another one I got to check out, too. This is our A cover, of course, by Sean Murphy. Um, but in this, Harley Quinn's daughter uh, has gone missing, and Bruce Wayne is on the hunt for. But while he's doing that, uh, Terry McGinnis, Batman Beyond, is hunting Bruce Wayne because he thinks he's responsible for the death of Terry's father. So it's... Uh, it's kind of a cat and mouse and uh, everything. It's a really cool issue. Uh, I won't give away anything else other than that. But this is our A cover. And then we have our Sean Murphy variant, kind of with the young Barbara Gordon up there as Batgirl and then the new commissioner, Barbara Gordon, at the bottom. Oh, have you already switched screens? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, you, we did it so fast. I'm sorry. This is Batman Superman, World's Finest, number three. This is cover A. In this issue, Robin and Supergirl venture to 1600 BC China, where they have to run into ancient superheroes, and Batman and Superman battle the new villain, Devil Neza. So a lot going on in this issue for number three, and we have a Perio cover B. The Batman who laughs I on there. That. Yeah, it looks like he's about to chomp off Superman's <laughs> hand. <laughs> okay, so this is our regular cover to Captain Carter issue number three. And um, in this, I, I think that's him in the background there. Tony Stark shows up. You know, so this is the alternate universe story mm -hmm. where Peggy Carter is Captain Carter. She's not Captain America. She, you know, mm -hmm. she's with... Uh, the, British um, agency when she got froze. So um, Tony Stark has shown up. Will he be her friend or foe? Uh, will he help her or will he be working for the cor the government she is quickly discovering is corrupt in the modern day? So this is the regular cover, and then we have the the, the Todd Knock Fortnite variant. <laughs> That's what you need to have that shield for to hold off pink koala looking <laughs> creatures and uh here is the ashley witter variant showing that she can she can take a hit and she's gonna hit you with that <laughs> shield now hey next up is issue three of punisher still haven't got issue two yet but uh i really liked issue one this is of course when punisher is now leading the hand and this one it talks about punisher is training the hand in the ways of the punisher so it's it's funny. It's kind of a reverse. Uh, uh, he's training them to be more like him, and uh, we get the story of Frank Castle's first kill. And I'm not sure what's going on with the cover. Why this child is wearing like that. a Captain America right. mask? Yeah, uh, a lot of questions raised on this one, but excited to find out. It's a good cover, but yeah, I'm completely in the dark <laughs> as to what, what was that's was about. kid was kid Frank Castle a fan of of Captain America before he got frozen in ice? Don't know. And then we have the Okazaki variant. Next up is A Town Called Terror, number two. Some really cool covers on these. I actually just finished reading the number one. It is a really dark story, literally and figuratively. <laughs> um, got some resurrection going on. Got some bad blood in the family and just uh, an interesting horror read so far. We'll find out what happens in issue two, kind of a mystery brewing. This is cover A, and then this is the Kodransky cover B. I like how it just looks like they scanned his uh, notebook because it's got like the little, <laughs> yeah. the little tabs at the top. Okay, so here's the regular cover for House of Slaughter number six. This is going to start a new plot line. Um, which, you know, kind of has to if you read issue number five. <laughs> that, that part was done. So now we're getting to a new character whose name is Edwin Slaughter. So first appearance of Edwin Slaughter in this, he works for the Scarlet Masks. And the Scarlet Masks, 
they're sort of the bookkeepers of the Order of St. George. Now, that might sound boring, but how boring can it be when you work for, you know, the Order of St. George? So they're supposed to chronicle things, and Edwin's never come up against anything too dangerous. But in this, he's out in the field where it shouldn't be too dangerous, but he learns that there's some American mythological legendary creature that is long thought dead who is not dead. He decides to look into it just a little bit. Maybe he wants to get in some danger. Well, that is what he finds. So for the first time in his career, he is put into real danger. He's put to the test. We're going to get to, you know, it's a good way to get to know a new character is put them in a situation they're not ready for. Yeah. So I'm really interested in this. On top of that, James Tynion is now going to be co-writing this with Sam Johns. He's a writer. I think he's kind of worked with them before because yeah. he's been doing the backup stories and Joker, mm -hmm. the ones about Punchline. So I think he's bringing on somebody else because of all the many things he's writing. <laughs> but uh, Tynion is still on this as co-writer. I'm, I'm very excited to see the ever-expanding universe. And learning about another house or uh, another kind of job sector. that they have. Yeah, yeah. The, the Scarlet Masks. So this is a good one to probably grab. I'm looking forward to it. House of Slaughter, I thought started good. Then, like in the middle, I was like, oh, this is pretty good. Those last two issues really hit. Those last two issues, four and five. If anybody hasn't read those yet, especially five, read that. Mm. And I think you'll see what had been going on the whole time, what it was building to. So we got the A cover, and then we have the B cover by Deladera who I believe Deladera is starting to do the interiors as well. Oh, really? Starting this issue. Huh. Yeah. It's a lot of work. <laughs> okay, next up we have issue two of Alice Ever After. I really liked issue one. A very uh, weird, mature take on Alice in Wonderland. When you find out that maybe Wonderland is just uh, the place she goes to when she takes certain pills. Mm -hmm. Um and uh, she is carted off to an asylum. In this one, we get more of her in the asylum, and a little bit like we saw in the first one, some pe some very recognizable faces are there uh, that may reflect characters from Wonderland, like a Dr. Madsen, who uh, likes experimental methods of treatment. Uh, he's a little mad. And then we uh, have a inmate that has an intriguing smile that may help Alice escape the asylum. So really cool parallels. I like that. I like the, the you know, spotting which characters are which. Uh, we saw a little bit of the Red Queen in the first one. So this is issue number two, and we've got some excellent variants for this as well. We have the Marini variant. Very elegant. Beautiful dress, of course. Like, emerald green's like my favorite color, so... <laughs> They got me on that. And then check this out. There is an Adam Hughes variant. This is one of our FOC reveal variants that you don't find out till the last minute. So, yes, an Adam Hughes variant as well for issue number two. In case you missed it, Kaiju Score came out with a volume two, essentially, called Kaiju Score Steal from Gods. And this is the issue number two. Just one cover on this. If you missed the number one, a new series is out. Okay, so slumber number three. Slumber is a, number. <laughs> slumber number. Slumber issue three. Oh, there we go. Is available to order. Issue two just dropped this last week, and our heroes are having to go into the dreams of Officer Finch to fight that nightmare that is murdering everyone. I mean, if you don't defeat it, it's gonna kill the dreamer. So in this one, they're going in. They're gonna see what they can do. We have our regular cover, and then we have our Reese variant. I like that one with the it's so pretty in the shadow though everything's corrupted mm -hmm. and scary. Next up we have Image 30th Anniversary Anthology number two of 12. So uh, this is of course the anthology series that Image is doing by a whole host of creators um, with some ongoing stories in it that are going to span the whole 12 issues. Some one shot, some little minis that'll be, you know, three to five stories long. Uh, so we have more stories from Jeff Johns with his, uh, his seems to be a horror story. Uh, don't know. It had a very cool twist at the end of the first one. There is a Maxwell Prince uh, ice cream man short in this one. 
There is a continuation of Kyle Higgins' story about his new character, Shift. And, of course, you know, we're getting uh, another installment of Scotty Young's, where in the first one, he just went around to members of his family asking for ideas for a story. Apparently that, that strip is continuing where Scotty Young's still looking for a story for this image anthology. Um, first appearances galore. Uh, new fun stories from creators you know. So just the one cover for this, this America and Dolfo cover. Very cool. This is Batman the Night, number five. We're at the halfway point with it. It's a ten-part series. This is the cover B from Frederici. In this, uh, the Dark Knight, Batman is going around Russia to search for the foremost expert in disguise and espionage. So that's what's going on in this issue. Okay, check out this cover. So this is the cover to Catwoman number 43. This is just the regular cover. And in it, Catwoman just, she needs a night out in the town with a crazy friend. So she calls Harley, <laughs> which is funny because mostly Catwoman's telling Harley to get away. Mm -hmm. You know, leave me be. You're too crazy. I got business to do. Well, this time she calls her and the two go. They have a wild night on the town that is going to involve a lot of rollerblading. <laughs> Thus the awesome cover here. But, of course, there's also going to be some random crime. Now, the solicitation didn't make it clear. Are they stopping the crime or are they doing the crime? You know, because, I mean, both of them, they're definitely seen as sort of heroic types, but they started as criminals, and they're not too far mm -hmm. from it. And, you know, it could be the one thing where the one eggs the other on, and before you know it, they're doing the crime. So, I don't know. Great cover. I think a lot of people are going to want to see this. And just sometimes you got to get away from the main stories and just have, like, a fun issue so I, I hope they do it in this one you know when you want a crazy night out and you're like looking through your thing like who could i call and then there's harley and you're like do i want to go that crazy <laughs> yep. once i do this i can't turn back yep so then we have a jenny frizen variant and we have a miyazawa variant okay next up we have flash 732 uh, this is the Todd Knock variant. And this one, Flash is going inside Bla or Iron Heights, not Blackgate. There's so many prisons in, in the DC <laughs> Universe. Inside Iron Heights to see what the rogues are cooking up. So he's he's going, I don't know if undercover, but uh, infiltrating Iron Heights. It looks like he's running up a wall. Mm -hmm. This is Wonder Woman Evolution number seven, the penultimate issue of eight. This is the Gary Frank cover B. I like the the uh, head of a of a, a Medusa yeah, Gorgon or something. It's pretty dark. Okay, so this is <laughs> <Butts>. the Talaski <laughs> variant for Nightwing number ninety two. Um, even though we see much of Nightwing on this cover, <laughs> this is actually a Melinda Zuko issue. So she, of course, was introduced a bunch of issues back. Mm -hmm. She's the mayor of Bloodhaven. She is a double agent who is pretending to work for Blockbuster, but really is trying to bring down his organization from the inside. Also turns out she is Dick Grayson's half-sister, and she knows about his secret identity. She has a lot of things that she's <laughs> juggling, and it's time to get an issue where we see what's going on with her and her struggles, particularly trying to be a double agent while everybody's trying to kill off uh, Dick Grayson. But... Uh, that doesn't mean Nightwing won't be in this at all, because they also promise that Nightwing and Oracle are going to finally put some sort of definition to their relationship. So, it sounds like a good, eventful issue of Nightwing. I, I've enjoyed them all for, for ages. Mm -hmm. So, And then we have two more variants to show. Here is the Jamal Campbell variant. Nightwing and Bitewing training together. See, he's going to know how to use that <laughs> that staff just as well as Nightwing. Soon. I don't know. He can throw it and like be fighting and be like, fetch and bring it back and keep fighting. That, Great skill. Go. And then here is the Jen Bartel variant for the Asian American Pacific Islander Month. Okay, next up is Hulk. Uh, this is Banner of War Part 3. And uh, this is the Gary Frank A cover. It's awesome getting Gary Frank doing some A covers. And when you uh, hear about this, you'll know a little bit about that cover and what that is in the background. Because in this issue, Iron Man interrupts the fight between Hulk and Thor. Because he thinks he knows something that is going to help Thor win against Hulk. Uh, and Iron Man is going to be using his new Celestial Hulkbuster. 
So I believe that's what we're seeing in the background is his new Celestial Hulkbuster. Uh, the series has been crazy, and I look forward to seeing what that actually entails. And I'm guessing since Iron Man is uh, not part of the Hulk or Thor series currently, he's he's he might get knocked out of the fight pretty fast. I feel like Tony Stark Industries has a whole division, like the anti-Hulk division. <laughs> and every time him and Hulk make peace, he's like, all right, guys. But then he feels bad. He's like, I can't lay all these people off. Go ahead and make the cosmic <laughs> armor now. Let's just keep upgrading. I got to yeah. keep you guys working. Yep. But then he always needs it. Yep. Because Hulk always gets stronger. <laughs> Then we have our, this one's really cool. This is the um, J. Scott Campbell variant. If you see it up close, it's uh, got kind of a retro-y uh, coloring style to it and everything. Very cool. We also have our Shaw connecting variant. We kind of see now all these connecting variants are different points in the history of Thor fighting Hulk. This is kind of your, what, 90s era mm -hmm. when Hulk had that. The, uh, the bandolier, bandolier and everything. And yep. I think that's like the Heroes Reborn uh, Hulk, Thor. Hulk definitely needs a bandolier of bullets for all the guns <laughs> he uses. <laughs> and then we have the uh, Yoon Skrull variant. He looks very uh, abomination there. It's pointy ears. And then we have the Zulo variant as well. Next up, we have King Spawn number 10, already at issue 10. In this issue, Spawn may have set the end times in motion. And we got a few different covers to show you. This is the cover A. Lounging around. And then we have a black blank sketch variant. Whip out your white gel pens. And then we have the Fernandez sketch variant. Okay, here is the blood red foil stamp variant. So, you know, they can't really show you what the foil will look like. You'll just have to imagine, I'm guessing. Do, do you think it'll be all that red or just maybe the eyes? Or... I think maybe the eyes and the teeth. Yeah. That kind of looks like what's standing out to me. Yeah, that's our bet. So that'll look foil. But once again, this is the sort of thing where stores are going to underorder it. If you want one, I would definitely ask your store for it. That last one looked awesome. It, it really did. It was a yeah, really the, good cover. The foil one that just came out last week looked great. Um in real life so this is for issue number two and of course we're still following willow who is the new vampire slayer she has taken over for buffy but does she have does she have what it takes mm. <laughs> next up we have john carter of mars number two just uh last week read number one i thought it was really fun kind of a, a pseudo sequel to the original john carter of mars series uh john carter's back on earth and, uh, but looks like the aliens, uh, the Martians have followed him back and are doing some terrible things on Earth. Uh, he is now going to be teaming up with Lieutenant Hines, uh, the uh, military guy he met from the first one, to try and retrieve his family from Mars. So, sounds fun. This issue number two sounds good. And this variant, after this one, this is the Jim Lee homage variant. So this is your homage to, I believe, Superman. I can't remember which is facing which. I think Batman is facing right and Superman was facing left. So this would have been the Superman cover that he did. But very cool looking. Next up we have Power Rangers number 19. This is the cover F, the FOC reveal variant. Uh, and it says Lobo on it, but don't be confused. That's just the artist. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice to see Lobo doing art now, expressing his more creative side. <laughs> I was about to say, frag. <laughs> <laughs> but it's all done in blood. Okay, so this is the main Sakai cover to Usagi Yojimbo number 28. This is just the further adventures of Usagi and Yukichi. So, you know, Yukichi was introduced, I think, back in issue number 20. She might have had a cameo in 19, but issue 20, I think, was her first full appearance. And, you know, she has stuck around because, once again, I mean, back when it happened, we were talking about how Usagi just needs more yeah. characters to build out from. So, uh, you know, a, a female rabbit samurai, why not? So, more Usagi and Yukichi in this issue. And uh, I believe this week is when the new Netflix um, show starts, the CG one, and it's it's about a descendant of Usagi, and it's called, it's like something, uh, Usagi Chronicles or something, so uh, pretty cool. They're expanding the universe in the books, and we've got this new show coming out. I'm glad you reminded me about that. <laughs>
Okay, so now we're going to go to other printings and graphic novels. Starting with Moon Knight number 10, the second print. And this was our first full appearance of Rutherford Winner. So uh, the character that appeared previously in like a digital version, but this is first in print appearance. Yeah, he just broke out of Ravencroft. Mm -hmm. And it seemed like he was going to be a villain, but now, I don't know. It looks like he actually might be teaming up with Moon Knight. And, uh, you know, the current writer Moon Knight, Jed McKay, he came up with Rutherford Winner back when he wasn't as known as a writer. Mm -hmm. So I think this is him bringing his, his pet creation <laughs> into the big book. So I would definitely watch that character. Mm -hmm. Next up is an original graphic novel, Zatanna, The Jewel of Gravesend. So this is going to be a sixteen ninety nine graphic novel. And the artist, this is kind of interesting, it's actually an Instagram artist, Jacqueline De Leon. So pretty neat. Somebody obviously saw their artwork and was like, gotta have it. It is about a magician's rivalry and a quest for a powerful jewel that Zatanna finds herself caught in the middle of. So it should be pretty neat. Not a lot of Zatanna stuff out there, so anybody, yeah. any Zatanna fans have to grab up what they can. And these, these young adult graphic novels are really popular. Mm -hmm. Very cool takes on the characters. Okay, so they're re releasing a new hardcover edition of 52. This is the omnibus that covers it all for 175 bucks. This is, what, 1,216 pages. 52 issues. <laughs> yeah, so the whole thing all together. So this followed Infinite Crisis, and the DC Universe had to get along for a whole year without Superman, Wonder Woman, or Batman being around. But that's okay. Plenty of other heroes in the DC Universe. First appearance of uh, Batwoman. Or not, uh, yes, uh, Kate Kane is Batwoman, right? Right. And I believe Renee Montoya's question, too? There's a lot of, like... Big things that people know now is kind of a given for the DC Universe happened during this time when you took away the big players. Yep, they're, they're very big shoes to fill, and so it kind of let all the other characters have some breathing room mm -hmm. whether they wanted it or not. So um, this was done by a lot of talented people. you got Jeff Johns, you have Mark Wade, you've got uh, Greg Rucka, you have Grant Morrison... Keith Giffen, like just a ton of yeah. super talented people behind this. So if this is something you always wanted to read, hard to get all 52 of those issues, <laughs> it is. you can just, you know, throw down this 175 bucks mm -hmm. and you have 1,216 pages of it, the entirety in a nice hardcover edition. And it's really good too. Like, you know, for a weekly event, sometimes they can wane or whatever. This was really, really good. Yep. And then, I thought this was cool that they are putting this out. This is Exo Manowar Retribution trade paperback. This is uh, Valiant collecting the original 1992 Exo Manowar series, which, uh, you know, I'm sure a lot of people have picked a couple issues out of the dollar box of that, but maybe you've never read the entire thing. This is $24.99, and it collects 0 through 9, and the Exo, Man Exo database number 1. So if you want to read some of those classic Valiant titles, here is your chance. And then we have another one of these small format Marvel Masterworks for Amazing Spider-Man Volume 3 and a couple covers with it. But this collects Amazing Spider-Man from the 1960s starting series, numbers 20 through 28 and annual number 2. Another cool thing in this one, we have, I believe they reprint the iconic Doctor Strange Amazing Spider-Man team up in this just in time for the movie almost. So this is the Cho variant and then we have the direct market variant as well. Okay and finally we have Wakanda World Black Panther Omnibus. This is a hardcover collection. Now what does it collect? It doesn't collect Black Panther's main series for the last five years. Instead it's all the adjacent series hmm. like the stuff that you might not have from about the last five years. Now, if you thought, um, you know, I was talking about the 52 Omnibus, that was 1,200 pages for 175 bucks. This is 1,376 pages <laughs> for just 125 bucks. Oh, wow. Yeah, so Marvel giving the discount, you know, as long as it's, it's quality paper. <laughs> yeah. As long as they're not using the cover stock that we're using a few <laughs> weeks back. Um, but let me tell you a bunch of the series that are in there. So this is going to have Rise of Black Panther 1 through 6, World of Wakanda 1 through 6, Black Panther and the Crew 1 through 6, Black Panther Long Live the King 1 through 10, 
or I'm sorry, one through six. Uh, Black Panther versus Deadpool. That was really fun. Yeah. Deadpool was sent to like um, get some vibranium or whatever. And anyway, great series. One through five. Shuri, one through ten. Very important series for a rising character. It's mm -hmm. only getting bigger. Killmonger, one through five. Yeah, I'll read whatever with Killmonger. <laughs> uh, and Agents of Wakanda 1 through 8, and there's more. Those are the main sort of collected mini uh, Black Panther adjacent series. But there's a lot of one-shots he was in in other series that get collected in this as well. So 1,376 pages, 125 bucks. That sounds like a great value for a Black Panther fan. And good luck finding all this in the wild. I was wild. about to say, like, a lot of those either weren't collected by themselves or... You know, sometimes they'll throw them in with the regular trade paperback, but sometimes they don't. So a lot of those just kind of fade off into obscurity. So yeah. it's great that they're, you know, kind of grabbing the extra little bits and putting them in a book together. Yeah, and most of it ha is from after the movie. So a lot of it, the writers were already sort of making nods toward future things mm -hmm. and, and pushing bigger characters up to the forefront that I think we're going to see in the second movie and onward from there as well. Uh, so this is the green cover, and then you have your choice between this or the Jimenez cover, whatever one you like better. And that's it. That is our show. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please give us a like and comment below with how you're doing or what you're most excited for. <laughs> how you <this> doing? <laughs> Please go check us out on our other platforms as well, and we will see you back next week and even before then, hopefully. I would like to ask, if any of you are watching on YouTube, please hit subscribe. We hit our goal of 1,500. Now we're heading to 1,600. Why not? <laughs> hit subscribe, and then you'll know about all of our upcoming shows. If you like this one, I'd say this was a fair show. Some are even better. <laughs> so hit subscribe, and thank you.